Hey, Gary Hoover here. Those who know me know that I'm fascinated with the future. Now, I believe you've got to understand the past before you can understand the future because things follow patterns and only by looking at what's happened 10, 20, 30 years ago can we begin to look at what's going to happen 10, 20, 30 years into the future. And I also believe that a key thing is studying demography and trends in the population. Peter Drucker said something like, the future that matters is the future that's already here. And he meant demo demography, demographics, because we know how many 60-year-olds will live here in 30 years pretty accurately, because they're 30-year-olds today. Anyway, people ask me, well, what should I read and everything? So today I was going to talk about a couple of books briefly. Um, I'll start with um, a guy named George Friedman. He is based here in Austin, Texas, and runs a company called Stratfor, S-T-R-A-T-F-O-R. And he wrote a book a year or so ago called The Next 100 Years. And more recently, he's written a book called The Next Decade. I suggest you read The Next 100 Years first and get that big picture. And then if you want, look at what I'd call the short-term future, just the next 10 years. But uh, uh, Mr. Friedman is one of the most insightful and interesting and provocative observers of the world that I know. And you'll see him on talk television and on radio programs and so on or hear him. Um, he thinks hard about the future and he looks at different scenarios. What could happen? Well, it might go this way, it might go that way. If that happens, then what? It's very speculative. Um, there aren't a lot of his projections that are going to come true. I mean, just because he's so speculative. But that makes it fun. And it doesn't mean he's wrong. His guess is still maybe better than anybody else you study. But when he goes out 100 years, he's really going out on a limb. This book, The Next 100 Years, is one of the best books you could read just to get you started thinking about the future and thinking longer term, which I think is really important, especially if you're an entrepreneur and want to think like an entrepreneur. The other book I'd mention, which in some ways is more concrete, because he's only looking 40 years in the future, and he's really focused on demographics and on things that are already underway. And that's The Next 100 Million, America in 2050, by Joel Kotkin, K-O-T-K-I-N. He's a very interesting writer. He doesn't believe in the common wisdom. He has his own view on things. I'd say he's a lot more optimistic than a lot of people are, but I believe if you really study the data and you study the history, there's reason to be optimistic. But he's really looking at the trends that are already underway. The increased number of Hispanic people in America already, it's about every seventh American is of Hispanic uh, origin or descent or ethnicity. And that's going to go way, way up over the next 40 years. That's a done deal. doesn't matter really what happens with immigration. The U.S., uh, over the next 40 years, will add something like 74 million Hispanic people, according to the Census Bureau. So that's kind of a done deal. And he talks about these things. He talks about cities of the future, what cities that we can really learn the most from and ones that maybe we can learn less. And I tell you, it's not what you may be reading other places. He's a wonderfully provocative thinker. And I think if you get Kotkin's, the next hundred million, he means the next hundred million people in America, as we go from a population of 300 million to 400 million, also a done deal. Don't be crying about it. She's happening. Um, and Friedman's book. And if you read those two books, you'll begin to think in new ways and provoke to talk to your friends about what does the future really hold. This is Gary Hoover. I'll see you later.